he was maybe conditioned. Oh. Oh. I'm not a clone, and again by prophecy, that I'm not a clone expert in the topic under study. Indian influence on art and architecture which I have some idea, but not the idea of an expert. I've got a little idea about Afghanistan, which two goes a little bit from there. So I should focus entirely in Afghanistan and then to on the basis of a very conveniently written book, Shwita Chaturvedi. What is the name? Buddhist science in Central Asia. Buddhism, Buddha in Central Asia. It's a very useful book. And it gives more or less complete list of the archaeological sites. Shrita Devi. Shrita Devi. Now, regarding the influence of ancient Indian art on Asia, one may differentiate between certain areas. For instance, in the case of Southeast Asia, occasionally you feel that this or that the Southeast Asian art tradition is almost a continuation of the Indian one. Uh, our approach is almost immediate. In, in the case of Afghanistan, Central Asia, Afghanistan, that was influenced mostly by Sanghara school of art of the Indian North. There is no problem about that. The only point is that the iconographic variations of everything that was found there, they're great. Central Asian figures display a lot of iconographic variations that are very uncomfortable with that. As far as China, Korea, and Japan are concerned, there is, of course, Indian influence. But the physiognomy is completely local. Iconography may be Buddhist inspiration. But otherwise, I cannot distinguish any essentially Indian element in the, in the art of. China, Korea, and Japan. With this brief notice, I shall focus only on Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, three primary points can be chosen <coughs> around Kabul, around Bamiyan, and around Mayarishi. Kabul itself has excavated stupa of Gundar near it, excavated years ago for the British Institute in Kabul. It is dated to the 2nd century AD and is basically Kusan period site. The major recently excavated site is Nes Aina, about 8 km southeast of Kabul in the Baba Wadi Mountains, where major copper mines are located. The site regularly covers I've never been to the site, so I can't be sure that it is so. The site accurately covers about a thousand hectares of land. If true, this is an extraordinary extensive site, which includes two large monastic areas of Borhami and Kataria Pepe. Painted clay statues of the Buddha and painted representations of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas are a major feature of this complex. Dating from the Kusan period to the period of the Hindu Shahis, the later in the 9th century AD. Also in the Kabul region is background, the home of famous ivories, Indian inspiration, but taking sensuousness to a unique level. Now, the point is background, the site of background, is such an important archaeological site. But it is very doubtful if that site can be excavated. If I am not wrong, the air base of Bagram, what they call Bagram, is built largely over the ancient site. So that is gone. But as far as archaeological treasures are concerned, 
I cannot think of any other site in the subcontinent which can beat it in terms of the beauties of the objects. In southern Afghanistan, especially near Kandahar and Belsky, there is the report of a large baking bone liberate dissociated to the Buddha from Kandahar and Buddhist images from Petisadar near Belsky. Apart from the Bamiyan conflicts, where two large Buddhas were destroyed in the Taliban in 2001, one gets two values of Buddhist images, the Kakrat Valley and the Cholal Valley. Around Balk or Madari Sharif are the sites of Dak Pedestone, 2nd century AD, and Tho Pedestone, both shaped from monastic sites and both of the same period. In Tajikistan, not far from Dushanbe, is Pajina Tepe, from where a large lion Buddha of about 7th to 8th century AD has been removed to Dushanbe Museum. All sculptures from this site were made of clay. In the south of Tajikistan, where the Buddhist sites of Kapirinian, Kapit Kavar, and Ustur Bullu, all full of monastic ruins and sculptures. Near the Jalakshan River was the city of Benchikin, a prosperous city of the Sikh group. It was reputedly the Pompeii of Central Asia. The site of its neighborhood yielded images of many Hindu gods and goddesses. Shiva and Parvati were common figures. Both Buddhism and Jainism prevailed in Benchikin capital of Sabdiyan, which was famous for its treasures. Mark and Nisa were the principal cities of Tarpaisa. Buddhist sites in Marwaisis are Art Kala, Gold Kala, and Sultan Kala. Buddhist manuscripts of the 15th century AD have also been covered in Armenia. <coughs> Uzbekistan also was very much on the Buddhist side. Some of the some of its famous Buddhist sites being Fire Stepe, Talbartin Tepe, Ayatram, and Kuba. Mention may also be made of Topra color, Ayas color, <coughs> and Samarthan. Samarthan was in the Sokian belt, where Brahmi and forestry records were used. Buddhist temples are once supposed to exist in Bukhara. Kiva oasis had probably Buddhist connection. Slides like Tarmith and Ayatram mixed two and monasteries. In Fargana, the main Buddhist site is Kumba, and the whole Fargana headed its Buddhist heritage. In Kipiristan, which is no less related Buddhist remains, the major sites of Buddhist past are near Bishke. The temple at Kraspaya Arechna is famous, nor can one ignore the two valley where the important sites seem to be Malasaguri. Finally, in Kazakhstan, Eli River Valley by Petrobrit, which are Buddhist in the deep. The drug drawings depict the Buddha and their restrictions in Tibetan, Pali, and Mongolia. If we pick up only this region as an example of the half of Indian religion and art throughout the historical period, till the entrance of Islam, we may point out that this divides the whole area between Kazakhstan and Afghanistan, that is the whole of Central Asia. Was this expansion of Buddhism? Related only to the expansion of trade along the route network, which encompassed all of this region, or did it have its initial impetus during the time of Ashoka, when the ancient counterpart of the modern Karakoram Highway was already in operation and later? When the Kusan dynasty controlled the Bhatri and the entire region, led to the growth of Indian religions on a large scale. If scholars are reluctant to admit this, I may point out the location of the Osman Edic site of Mansera at the Indian mouth of the Karakoram Highway near the famous city of Daxila. Finally, I have reduced the present scholars to take note of a simple point. Outside Lokesh Chandraji's research center, which is concerned with the forms of Buddhism and Buddhist art in mostly East Asia. Can we think of any kind of primary Indian expertise in the area of different manifestations of ancient Indian art and architecture outside India? I cannot think of it. 
Nita Chaturvedi is book is a travel, and all credit is due to her for trying to give us a clear idea. But the purpose of this enormous range of data will require lifetime scholar research and study. Seeing the glory of ancient India, we have to take on credit the hard load of the human work. Otherwise, in this branch of scholarship, we will be branded as a bunch of 